Like I just said, I've worked at Martin Building Materials for so many years. I, there's several people in that lower Deville area down there that call me Bo Martin. <laughs> so I guess that's what men call me, Bo Martin. <laughs> and I count that an honor and a privilege. But Jesus is saying, who do men say that I am? Jesus said. Mm. And in verse 14, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Well, you know, that ain't a bad thing. Yeah. Well, John and Jesus were related. They were cousins. And to be known maybe as John the Baptist, I guess, is not a bad thing. But Jesus was so much better, so much greater. He brought more to the table than John the Baptist. You know, John went out through the wilderness in the uh, animal skins and that and just that and the other, and he, and he preached what the Holy Spirit laid upon his heart, and it was to be, to be redeemed, to change your life, that there's one that's coming greater than myself, Jesus. Some say that they call you Elias or Elijah. And Elijah, again, is not a bad thing. But Jesus was so much more than Elijah. Yes, Elijah was a wonderful prophet of the old days. And he done so many wonderful miracles and things. And others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But Jesus was so much more than a prophet. Amen. You know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, when Mary got to that tomb that morning at sunrise and she goes and she sees the stone is moved away. And she peeps inside and she looks and there's nothing in there but just some folded linens. That's when Jesus was more than a prophet. Amen. See, he was not in there. Those old grave clothes had been shed and had been piled up there where he was. But he had done, busted the gates of hell wide open mm -hmm. yes. and Satan couldn't hold him right. because he is more powerful than Satan has ever dreamed of. Right. Now Satan wouldn't have you to believe that. Satan wants you to think that he is the master of the universe. He controls everything. But he does not. Amen. We know the man that can conquer Satan. Yeah. We know him. We know his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus does what Jesus does. He's sitting there under that tree, and maybe a gentle breeze is blowing, and maybe the waves are bouncing <coughs> off the shore, and the seagulls are running along there in the sand. And and he looks to his disciples, he says, But whom say ye that I am? You guys have followed me ever since we've got started. We've been up and down this road before. Who do you say that I am? Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Hey, wow. You know, it's kind of like when you are sitting there and you're watching that baseball game and that pitcher catches the, looks at the catcher and catches that sign and he starts to wind up and he releases that pitch and it's going right straight down the middle of the plate and 
that batter picks up his leg and he steps into the pitch and takes that bat and bow and knocks it out of the park. That's what Peter just thought. Mm -hmm. He recognized who Jesus was early on. He recognized who he was. He knew who he was. And whenever Jesus gave him the opportunity, he said, I know who you are. You're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I don't know, I'm sure it did not catch Jesus off guard. But Jesus answered in verse 17, He said, Answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon or Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Whenever we are so in tune with God, and we're walking that straight path, as we as Christians should do, we have an ear toward God. Right. And God talks to us, and we can talk to Him. And He notified Simon Peter, He said, Now boy, here's what I want you to say. And He just just, just, just poured that Spirit on to, to, to uh, Peter. And Peter said, You're Christ! You're the Son of the living God! Mm. Isn't it wonderful that the creator of this whole earth, the creator of man, the creator of all creatures, great and small, we can have a relationship with Him. Amen. You know, we can pick up the phone and we can call our friends and we can call our family we can call our police jury member. We can call our justice of the peace. We can call all of our people. And they're so wonderful. We can't call the president. He's busy. <laughs> but isn't it wonderful that we can get in touch with God? Right. I talked to him this morning at 3 o'clock and he listened. He was there. Yeah. <laughs> CC's brother, Avery, called me Saturday night at 11 o'clock. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he said, Oh. <laughs> he said, CC bought a CD from me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I, I call it Brid. Said, uh, did you pay for that with check or cash? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Avery. Shouldn't you be asleep? <laughs> I said, it matters not. I'm good for 20 bucks either way. <laughs> Next time he calls at 11 o'clock, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> if he does it again, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> and I'll tell you on TV or on the phone, where I'm going to shoot him dead. <laughs> you don't have to, I'll never give myself up. I'll bring the weapon with me. <laughs> he got a hold of me. We talked. And by the way, I paid, she paid cash. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Avery knew how to get a hold to us. Even though we were just We know how to get a hold of God. He's there 24 7, seven days a week. He closes the same day the hospital. Which is never. He's always on 
line. We can always talk. We can always be with Him. We can always listen. And you know, that's a lot of times what our problem is. Amen. We want to do all the talking, and we don't ever want to do none of the listening. Amen. Yeah. Because sometimes He steps on our toes and tells us what we don't need to do. Listen to that as well. In verse 17, Blessed art thou, Simon, or Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father has told you that. Isn't it wonderful? And not only Peter is that, verse 18, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now let's talk. That's a cross. That's a cross. We need to stand on that promise as a church. Yes. Now I'm going I'm I'm to make y'all mad. The reason why we got an abortion in our state, in our United States, is because we as Christians allowed it. Shame on us. We should have pitched a fit. But we didn't. Whenever they bring out these gay and lesbian rights and all this kind of stuff, we should be pitching a fit. We should have our signs up in the air and we should be picketing and we should be doing all the things that these other folks do. We have rights. And shame on us for not using them. Shame on us. No and shame on you. And shame on you. And upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. See, Satan can't come into church. Now, sometimes we as Christians bring him in there with us. We should leave him outside where he belongs in the world. Sometimes we get a burr under our saddle and we won't go to church and we won't pitch a fit. That's not right. Agreed. Amen. That's not right. Amen. We need to leave him in the world where he belongs. And leave him in hell where he belongs. Where God will <coughs> throw him on that. Right. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is holy. The sanctuary is holy. The altar is holy. Our worship time is holy. It's for God. It's a commandment. Mm -hmm. It's a law. We as Christians have sit on our hands too long. Amen. We as Christians have not spoken up like we should. We are nice people. We love one another. We want to we, we want to just allow things to happen and we just roll over and just let things go and all God will fix it. And God will do this. And God will let God won't do anything unless we ask Him. We have to pray. We have to join our forces. We call us the silent majority. We don't need to be silent anymore. Amen. We need to stand up. And on this uh, abortion thing, this number one amendment thing, thank you for announcing that in here. Uh, I've been announcing that at our church for two weeks now. You go to the ballot box and you go to place your vote and you read some of these amendments. Oh, I've got some high school education and I can't figure them out. That's true. 
I don't know, you know, I mean, sometimes you vote yes for something and it means no, and you vote no and it means yes, you don't know what to do. That ought to be a law right there they shouldn't be able to do that. I mean, you take a, a redneck like me, and I walk in there, you know, and I want to, you know, I'm going to do my vote and I want to I go on about my business. And I get in there and I get confused. I don't even know how to get out of the booth sometimes. <laughs> but upon that I will build the church, Peter. Upon that, that statement that you just made, I want to build my church on that solid rock. Amen. On that solid rock. To know that the devil can't help us. And we can give ourselves up to him if we let him. But he's a defeated foe. He's defeated before he gets started and he knows that in the very beginning. That's why he wants to play with our mind. That's why he wants to do all these kind of things to us. He knows if he gets into our mind that we can do some stupid things. We can turn our back on God. We can quit living the Christian life. We can quit going to church. We can turn our back and never look back. Thank God this gentleman of 75 years realized that before it was too late. You know, we have such a problem. Uh, we have uh, our young people. Out, they're out in this world and, and they're looking, they're searching. They're trying to find something. They're, they're trying to find something that's good, something that they can, they can just latch on to and, and there's old Satan out there behind the trees. Come over here. i got something for you. It's, it's called Christian death. You'll enjoy it. You'll get high. You, you'll, get, you'll get all that. You'll forget about all your problems. You'll, you'll, you won't remember anything. And the next thing you know, No. Since I've been here last, I, I think it's just unbelievable the funerals that's been going on in our area in Jonesville. Buried a 40 a year old lady uh, two weeks ago. You know, she had, she had uh, taken these drugs and things and she trying to get off of them and this and that and the other. And I think it weakened her system so and she wound up catching some type of COPD, whatever that is, and it took her life. Forty years old. That's young. <laughs> My wife's cousin decided after he had been in rehab some two or three different times, he looked up one day and he said, you know, I'm not going to fight this battle anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. I can't win. Goes into the barn, throws a chain over the rafter. And puts the other end around his neck. So sad. He didn't have to do that. He didn't. He, he, he's got God. He's, he's, got, he's got this rock that's in the church. He can stand upon that rock and the gates of hell won't prevail against him. The old devil is out there. He's alive and he's well. And he's doing his job and he's very good at his job. But Wherever you mention the name of Jesus. Amen. Whenever you bring him into the equation, he has to flee. He has to go. He can't be there. God will remove him and put him where he belongs.
this has been wonderful words that we have shared with you all this morning, this evening, and I, I just love that. I, I love the scripture. It just, just does something to me when I look down at this page and I see the writing in red and it says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. But you know, it wasn't long after this that Jesus or Peter <coughs> let Jesus down. Remember that, you know, he denied Christ so many times. But he was human. And whatever he did, the Lord looked right square at him and he knew that he, he messed up. Amen. But then he come back in a fury. You remember in Acts where he preached a wonderful song. So God does give us second chances. And I'm so glad of that. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Father, again, we thank you for these words, Lord, that you were able to share. We thank you, Lord, for these words in red. Lord, from time to time, you say, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Lord, we know that when we see that, we need to pay attention. I'm only going to say it one time. And as we read these words, Lord, we will apply those, Lord, to our, our lives. And Lord, we want to live the life that you want us to live. We, we, want, to, we want to be a Christian. We want to be Christ-like. And Lord, there's going to be a day when we stand before the judgment bar and we look up at you, Lord, and you say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. And that's the words I'm ready to hear, Lord. And again, Lord, we thank you for this this church, Lord, is such a loving church. It's, it's a good church. It's, the people here, Lord, are, are just so wonderful. You can, you can feel the Spirit here. And Lord, we are so thankful. And Lord, we love you. Thank you for the blessings that thou give us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.